It's a ghost, the ghost of a house that once was new. But it hasn't always been like this. Once upon a time, when the house was new, happy people lived here, and the owner was proud of his house. Not a worry in the world. This man's house was his castle. But a year or two passed, and then the trouble began. Just little things at first, a drawer that wouldn't close a window that wouldn't open, and then greater faults, things that took time and money. The owner could never permanently cure his house of these ailments. They grew more as time went on. Finally, he gave up. He realized the trouble was far below the surface, in the foundation under the house. Today, Every man's automobile is his house on wheels, giving him a roof over his head, keeping him warm in winter, cool in summer, besides moving him about wherever he wants to go. But there are haunted cars, just as there are haunted houses. One shock from an earthquake and a house falls to pieces, but your house on wheels must be built to withstand an earthquake every second or oftener when it's that kind of a road, rolling and bumping, twisting and turning. If a car does not have a good foundation, it soon becomes the haunt of ghosts. Body joints loosen up, bringing squeaks and rattles. Even the tires get more wear because the car weaves and won't hold a road. A car must have a strong foundation, and in an automobile, the foundation is the frame. Few people see the real foundations of their houses, and few owners see the frames of their automobiles. And there are many important engineering developments in the modern automobile frame, which aren't apparent when you look at the car. Let's see what an automobile frame has to do, and what kind of a frame is required to do the job. This line is the road. These are the wheels, and this is the body. Now let's look at it from another viewpoint, looking down on top of the car. The car is supported at four corners by the wheels. We must have a strong, rigid foundation to support the body over its entire length. So let's take off the body and build a foundation, starting with these two pieces of steel, which we will call side members. Now we need something to keep the side members apart and something to hold them together. So we put in two more steel pieces, which we call cross members. But how are we going to turn those front wheels? They haven't enough room. Well, let's give them all the room they want. Let's make the frame narrower in front. That's better. How about the rear end of the frame? We've got one cross member but that's not enough. It will give us a good, rigid support for the gas tank, but we need something stronger than that. Let's put in another one that makes the rear of the frame strong and rigid. And just to make sure that our foundation won't go together in the middle like this, let's put in another cross member right about here. Now we have a frame that you can't pull apart, that you can't push together. 
pretty good job as far as we've gone. Hey there, that won't do. To prevent this sort of thing, let's put in some more steel girders like the letter Y. Now, any force applied here will be transferred to the center of the frame. But we don't want to be compelled to make this center cross piece too heavy. So, to help spread the strain, let's put in these members, like the letter K. Of course, we have to consider the engine. We're going to support the front of the engine here. So we'll have to have another cross member here to support the rear of the engine. Now we've designed a skeleton frame. But before we ride on it, we'll have to do some figuring. And the first thing we want to know is what part of the frame is going to get the most severe strain? Or as engineers would say, where is the point of maximum stress? This is a piece of steel supported at each end. We apply a weight at the center of this piece of steel. We let the steel bend up and down, up and down, and it doesn't break because the strain is equalized throughout its length. But suppose we fasten a steel box over half the length of the beam and again apply the weight. Up and down it bends, but this time it breaks because while this end was held rigid by the steel box above it, this point was doing most of the bending. Right here at the edge of the box was the point of greatest strain. As an engineer would say, the stress was localized. So it is with an automobile frame. The point of greatest strain is here at the front edge of the steel box or body of the car. And on the frame, that point is here. The usual way of building this part of the frame would be to use only one piece of steel. But in this frame, we're going to use two steel girders like this and tie them together with a heavy steel plate known as a gusset. This construction gives us rigid strength where we need it. Another point of great stress is here. So here again, we add a heavy steel plate to give us extra strength. When we ride on the frame we have designed, we'll find that there is another point of heavy strain, here in the hump, where we bent the side member up to get over the rear axle. So we'll give it a reinforcement too. Since we are going to have harmony between the front and rear springs, knee action on the car we are building, let's make the front end of the car as rigid as possible. With knee action, we use this sturdy girder of steel to hold the wheels. It's time to add these brackets, called step hangers, which support the running boards. And now, look out for the rivets. Here they come. <laughs> 219 tough steel rivets to hold our frame together. Cold driven rivets, too, that won't shrink after they're in place. Now, we have a strong, rigid foundation. With this YK frame, your car will stand up under the hardest usage for tens of thousands of miles. Strong, heavy side members for support. Sturdy cross members for rigidity. Big steel center braces for strength. Heavy reinforcements at points of greatest strain. A good husky support for the engine and a strong cross piece to hold the knee action wheels. Such a frame gives rigid support to the whole car. Springs, steering gear and engine have a firm foundation. The body and every part of the car ride on a frame that is solid, strong and safe. With such a foundation for your car, you can ride on good roads or bad roads, or any kind of road. Your car has a foundation to protect all vital parts from damaging shocks and strains. Summers and winters may come and go, but such a house on wheels will never have to fear the creaks and rattles of a haunted house.